Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I'm going to get I'm going to readdress the AT1 to CT1 Yamaha project. That's where we we went from a uh, we've actually got a menagerie of parts here. It was kind of a way just to clean out the shed and build a bike. And it's a, it's a 69 frame, a 70 or a 71 engine, I can't remember for sure. Uh, and a lot of strange parts. Uh, I think the seat is probably not the one for that one. Uh, I know there's a bunch of different seats but it fits and uh, I, I wasn't able to use the little rod that props it up and all that stuff but uh, we may do with a lanyard and anyhow <clears throat> we're today we're going to do what real we really need to do to finish the project and that is to get some paint on it i'm going to briefly go through the paint process i really wanted to cover more in depth on that but uh, I had gotten uh, food poisoning and I was just, ter I felt terrible and I just had to get through it. And I just, I didn't want to uh, draw it out too far. And uh, what I'll do is I've got the 125 MX project yet to paint and I've got some fenders for a fender and a side cover to paint for the TS250 project. So at least one of those, I'll go in a little bit more in depth showing the mixing of the paint and so on and so forth. Uh, but I really wanted to do it this time, but I just couldn't do it. Uh, I, this, we ate at a place on Monday and this was Tuesday about two o'clock in the afternoon and it hit me like a ton of bricks and I've been down until really today's Friday. I'm finishing up today. Yesterday I got out here and I piddled around a little bit, but Friday or today was the, the first day that I felt uh, worth a hoot. So be careful with what you eat. I know uh, you don't have any choice or when you go to a restaurant, <clears throat> but uh, just be careful and uh, you know, go to places that uh, have a good reputation. Anyhow, uh, let's get down there and get to it and get started on this uh, AT1 to CT1 Yamaha project. Okay, guys, getting ready to... First thing we're going to do is we're going to shoot the sealer. Uh, this is the primer that was on it last year when I, uh, when I did all the body work. And then winter came and we couldn't get it painted. Um, I've got these already and I've already, uh, uh, I've already uh, rubbed them down with a uh, Scotch-Brite. I use a, a gray Scotch-Brite. Go back and break the surface and get all the uh, the dirt and whatnot off of it. Then I went back with uh, uh, the Ultra Clean, or Acrylic Clean, and uh, cleaned it for dirt. And now the next thing I need to do is come in and do the tack cloth on everything. So I'll be, there's the tack cloth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the sealer and it's a gray sealer. Uh, it's uh, mixed at five parts uh, sealer to one part hardener. And then we'll spray that on. Then we'll come back and we'll spray the white. The white is for the stripe that's gonna go right here. So you lay the stripe down and then we wait, oh, a couple hours. And then we come back and tape the white and then we come back in and we shoot the base coat and then the clear and then we remove the the uh, oh i'm sorry that's not right we're going to shoot the white wait a couple hours tape the white 
then come back and shoot silver. Then we're going to come back and shoot the base coat, which is green in this case, Yamaha Candy Green. And once that's all done, then we'll spray it with um, uh, clear. And that's the way it's going to go on all these parts here today. Uh, I don't know when, maybe tomorrow if I'm, if I'm doing okay, uh, I'll go ahead and shoot this one and this will be red and uh, it's the only piece I need to do. So it'll, it'll be uh, uh, the sealer, the silver, we're, gonna let, we're not going to do white because we don't put a, a, a stripe on it, we just put a decal. So we shoot the silver, then the base coat, which is uh, red, and then the clear. So that's tomorrow's project. Uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna get all the hard stuff done today. Hopefully everything goes right, and uh, we don't have any problems. It's it's always kind of scary to me anyway because I don't do this every day. Uh, I'm you know like I say I come in and I put the the white on, and then tape it down or tape the stripe off, and you know you just you go ahead and you spray all your other stuff on and hope it doesn't lift or do any weird things and then you pray that when you pull the tape off when it's all dry you don't lift any of the white so that's that's just uh, you know when it, if it messes up you just start over that's all you can do uh, but hopefully we won't mess up the last time I I did this everything went just fine so we're just gonna pray and hope
Okay, we've got the white on. <clears throat> now we we got to put we got to put the tape on, and that's going to be just above the style line here. And as we get down to the bottom, it'll be right at the bottom of the tank. So it's it's kind of a tricky little thing, and you've got to kind of do it. You've got to have a place here at the bottom where you can make your uh, make your corner you don't want to stretch this too much And we've got our stripes on here too. Not too bad. Not the straightest thing in the world, though.
All right. We just got to do the clear and we can wait until tomorrow for that. 24 hours is the time frame. Okay guys, there's our paint, got a little trash in it, looks like. That's just par for the course for a garage paint job. I sure like that candy green. Always have. And I've got another one yet to paint uh, this color. I don't think you've seen it yet, but uh, we'll be getting in here soon. The uh, next one will be the, the 125 MX. It's uh, pretty much ready to go. Just got to just got to squirt it and uh, it, it won't be as big a deal on this one because uh, we're not putting stripes on it because it uses a decal. So this one will just get uh, uh, the sealer, then the uh, silver, and then the red. <clears throat> and it'll have to be all scuffed up and everything again. But pretty happy with that. Okay, after reviewing that footage, the, uh, the color looked a little blue to me, so I thought I'd better come back out and uh, give you another peek at it in natural lighting. Okay, I've been kind of going through all my parts here <clears throat> that I'm going to need to put this together. I've still got to clean up a lot of it, but I'm going through and finding the best parts. Uh, so that we can go ahead and finish assembly on this uh, CT1. And I've got to get a few things. Uh, I like this headlight because it's got the replaceable bulb. And I believe these are the same as the Kawasaki. Uh, I can't find them for a Yamaha. Can't even find a number on it. But I... Uh, was looking around I found some for Kawasaki I think so I ordered them they weren't very much maybe eight bucks a piece or something like that and I ordered a couple of them and we'll see if those will fit there were several different ones this one here I believe is okay uh, but see this is a 25 watt and this one here is a 35 35 35 so it'd be a little brighter I'm I'm betting it's 72, 73, but when you look it up in the IPB, it's it really only shows for uh, uh, a seal beam, and of course we don't want to do, we don't want to mess with that if we can help it because they're just uh, they're out of they're just insane trying to buy them. You can convert them over, I guess. I'm going to try that on a Suzuki. I I haven't done one yet, but. Right now, I've got the 
uh, oil tank sitting here and I've got to get a window in it. So I've got a new window and these things can be pretty difficult. I'm just going to go ahead and apply a little grease in the, the hole and then apply a little bit more on the item itself there. They, they can be pretty difficult to push in at times. <clears throat> and there she goes. Get get your best foot forward and try to get her in there. Okay, I've got a little grease. Let me get my grease remover and try to clean that up. Since this isn't very old paint yet, I'm uh, just using some Windex on a microfiber towel. Probably the best option. That looks like it did it. The paper will actually scratch that soft paint. It's um, well, two days, I guess. Okay, so we've got that in, and we just had a plug in the top, and this is the older tank. This, I believe, is a 70 tank. Yeah, it is, because it was uh, green when I bought it. Just needed a, it was an NOS tank, but it had a little dent in it, and we had to fix that. So it's got the banjo fitting and everything that goes in the bottom instead of the one that's uh, uh, brazed into it. And let's see if that's the right, yep, that's the right uh, cap for it. And down here we've got, this is all, in, all came with it, this is a new one. So you've got the two washers and the banjo fitting in the nut. And I'm pretty sure that kind of goes off kind of at an angle like that. So I'll get my 14 millimeter and give that a snug. And then I think we'll be just about done. We'll have to find a vent tube and our lanyards. I think. I, I don't know what tank or what uh, uh, frame we got here. I think this is an early frame, so it may not have any of that stuff. So that's ready to go. I just need to work on getting things assembled for uh, all the, the fork ears to get the headlight on. And I need to rebuild the fuel petcock. So that's probably what we'll take a peek at next. Okay, got our breather hose on and I did have to put another uh, grommet in right here. Forgot about that one. So I think we're good. This, let's see. Yeah, it does use a lanyard. It's got one right here and right there. I need to try to find those lanyards. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to turn over some rocks to find them. So I'll just get it up here and mounted now so I can uh, keep it safe. And then I'll look for those things.
and let's see here. I think I need to trim my hose a little bit. I need to go down and under. Or is it over? I think over is actually. Well, no, it needs to go under. That'll give it better gravity feed. So I'll chop it off. Not right there. Get a clamp on it. And see if we can get it pushed up over that. Okay, got one one ear on. I just pulled everything back, laid it on a pad back here over the frame, <clears throat> and we've got oh what four or five parts here. We've got this piece that slides down first, and it just kind of it'll center out when you when you get to it there. And then you've got a <clears throat> a rubber grommet that goes on. And then your uh, trim. And then you've got this trim that I've already got on top. And it just slides right down over it. And everything comes together there. <clears throat> so hopefully if everything is proper and wants to cooperate, And we should be able to just put it right back on there. But things seem to be a little short for some reason. Now you guys were probably hollering at me. Here's, here's the deal. Pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. And just, I was so close to it, I couldn't see it. <clears throat> All right. Make sure all the cables are where they're supposed to be. All right, I think everything is back in its proper position. So we'll run down this center bolt, and that should bring it back down to where it needs to be. I may have to leave that loose because, uh, you know, just in case I uh, need to be able to turn the, the headlight ears a little bit. We'll see here when I tighten it down a little bit. Yeah, that, that tightens her up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it right there until I get the headlight bucket in. I think everything is looking okay there. I can probably get rid of my pad. Looking better already. Okay, let's get the bucket prepped here. <clears throat> we got... Um, I've actually got a new one of these coming. Uh, I believe that needs to go here and the plug needs to go back here. So we'll go ahead and get the plug in. There's no um, um, There isn't a high beam indicator in the uh, Speedo or TAC, 
So that's why they put it here. Oops, I've got a washer that goes in there. That's why it's not tightening up. So we'll get that in there. And I check this bulb and it's good. But I, like I say, I do have a new one. It's a, it's a reproduction. It's actually a little better deal. We'll see when it comes in. I may not change it out. This, this one had a lot of paint on it and I, I was able to get most of it off. So I'm pretty happy with that. And these pieces here, these are the ones that came out of it. I'm not sure whether they're all that flat or not. These I get from uh, HVC Cycle, and they're certainly for a street bike, but they look about the same. So I thought I'd try it and see if those others are just compressed. You know, we can compress these down too and have some new ones in there. It may just not even fit. And then we've got our wire loom grommet. There. And I believe these things just pop right in here. Get some soap and water there to kind of get those to slide in there. Yeah, help some. Okay. Okay, we've got that in there. I'm gonna leave it loose so that I can go back in and fish all the wires back through. I'll, I'll probably have to pull all of them loose. But, you know, they're all uh, um, color-coded, so it's pretty easy. This piece here is the, uh, it would go up here on this one, on the uh, headlight uh, high beam but this one actually uses a, this different one. So this is the one I'm gonna use, the one I put in first, and I'll just pop this one out and pop that one in. So we're just about there. Got our, I'll go ahead and tighten up everything up here. I think I can do that. And then we'll uh, work on the petcock and get the gas tank on. Okay, just get our petcock assembled, get our new gasket in there. And uh, I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease on the face of that. And we've got our spring cover. And two screws.
feels good. And we've got this little guy here, brand new and goes in here. And again, just, I'm just going to put a little bit right here on the top. Doesn't have to be very tight. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Put a little bit of grease in the in the groove. Slip our new one in there. Just take what we got left there and just kind of go over the top of it. That keeps it from sticking to the to the paint. This stuff was all pretty bad, really flat, really eat up, and cracked. So all the old stuff. And these are the attached screws. So let me get the tank over here. Now we've got our mellow yellow badges Matt Lockwood sent me. Sure was sorry to hear that his business folded up. I, I think he had a good thing going. It, uh, I'm sure COVID and everything else that was going on took its toll just like it does in a lot of other small businesses. It's a good man. Well, I, may, I may need to chase that one or something. It's Let me see what's going on. Okay, looks pretty great. Sure like that color. Now we're kind of at the point where 
we were before we took everything off to paint it. So everything's kind of back together, I think. So I'm, first thing I'm going to do is get some injection oil in. And hope it doesn't leak. Yeah, I've got to get some fuel line on. Running these fuel lines are always kind of difficult for me. I guess they're just kind of hard to get to and as you get older you lose a little bit of dexterity and strength I guess. Okay, let's see if I can get the clamp up there. Sometimes these things are just <laughs> It's more of a challenge than anything else. I don't think that clamp's tight enough. There, better. Okay. Now we got to see about getting some fuel in it. Let's turn some fuel loose and see if see if we have a problem. I always like to do it right at first. Maybe if you tap a little bit while it's filling up, it won't do it. All right, she's full. So far, so good. Not seeing anything below either. All right. Let's see what she do with that new green paint.
still got the headlight to deal with. Uh, hopefully I have a bulb here in a week or so. This one, if you remember, had already been started and ran uh, before we painted it. mix in it along with the oil pump Did the gauge is on. the uh, microphone like I used to Okay guys, there you have it. Uh, this is again the AT1 to CT1 project. It's been going on for oh, probably close to two years. And I'm really happy with how it turned out for the most part. I do still have to get the uh, headlight going. I told you about that. I've got a, a light or a bulb coming. I hope that's gonna work for me. Uh, this was the last commercially done cylinder bore that I have had done. And I'd had this cylinder for quite a few years. And as with almost all the cylinders that I've had commercially bored, they usually bore them uh, on the oversized, oversized a little bit. And I know why they do it. Uh, you know, they don't want them back because it's stuck or something like that. But that's when I finally decided to get my own equipment and do my own because so many of them, you know, they just, uh, I think this one is, I want to say it's 40 over, which is uh, what, uh, a full millimeter. And you know, you're taking life out of your cylinder when you bore, and when they, when they overbore to protect themselves, uh, it just takes life out of the cylinder. It just seems a little rattly to me. Uh, I, I've got another cylinder. I think eventually I'll probably redo it, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll ride it for a little bit and see if it'll straighten up, but I don't think it's going to do much. Uh, it'll heat up some, you know, that piston will go ahead and swell up and it'll, uh, uh, it'll quiet down. But this is a cast piston, it's a Yamaha piston, so it's not like it's a Wiseco where you've got uh, extra clearances to deal with and 
uh, longer for it to heat up and swell up, that sort of thing. But anyhow, uh, I just, on the, when I started doing the painting on this, uh, I'd just come down with salmonella poisoning and I was just having a heck of a time just trying to stay on my feet, let alone paint. But I had already set up everything, I'd mixed things, and it just hit me. And I knew I had to get through it because for each coat, uh, you've, you've got an hour time before you have to recoat. So once I put on the uh, primer sealer, then I've got one hour before, at the maximum before I can start, before I start recoating. And then each subsequent coat after that, it's the same thing. You're an hour it, until you get all your base coats on, then you've got a 24 hour window to do your clear. And I was so sick, I couldn't make it. And I just prayed to the Lord that he would help me out. And he did. Uh, it, um, it turned out wonderful, and uh, I just I'm so happy with it. So all the uh, all the praise goes to the the man upstairs on the paint. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.